Greetings my peeps, this is John the Verbose and this video is basically one that I haven't done in years and because I think the previous one that I had made had, may have had some copyrighted music in it that I have since removed it so it's good to have a new one but this video is about the equipment that you use that goes into video production for YouTube. So this, in this video, it's pretty much going to be everything I use. Not necessarily everything I use on a regular basis, but this is stuff that I've been using fairly consistently um, depending on the type of project that I want. So we will start with, well, this. This is my makeshift lapel microphone, lavalier microphone. This was actually a uh, earbud and mobile phone microphone two-in-one combo thing. Uh, it would split right where the foam is in here to go to the two different earbuds and the microphone module is right inside the foam. So the foam and the clip that I'm holding are two different things that I bought like a bag. Of, I, they were, I bought them in bulk little bags <clears throat> on Amazon that just had like spare microphone foam covers which is great for lowering the wind um, and then the clips were the same thing another I got a bag of these clips and I just super glued it onto the microphone I did cut a hole in the side of the foam covering and so that is so that I could wrap the foam cover around the microphone and it works out fairly well actually so it doesn't require any phantom power and I just plug it right into my iPod touch in the iPod touch I just use the uh, sound recorder or voice recorder whatever they call the damn app and then I just sync it up to the the video that I'm recording in post-production and so and the easy way to sync it is to make sure that you have something that you can distinctly tie it to uh, like I can match it up to the sound wave sound form in my post-production editor on the computer by just kind of matching up the waves. Uh, another way I can do that is, or an easy way to pinpoint specific moments that I want to sync is just to clap. And so I usually, of course, edit that out and you never see that. And I really only, I use this a lot of the time because I found that it's better than trying to amplify the uh, the sound recorded from the camera. So, also, since this records in 1080p HD, my iPod Touch also has a usable camera on it, which is effective for uh, any time that I need to record from multiple angles simultaneously, or if th that's the only thing that I have accessible to me at the time. I also have this tiny little travel tripod, and and then this uh, springy cell phone uh, mount that you can just attach to it. Um, I have a larger tripod that is kind of... This one's good for, like, wrapping around anything, like tree branches, pipes, I don't know, stuff. And this one actually has a quick release. Slide that right back out. And so I usually, when I'm sitting on the dock, I've actually switched to starting to use this one, this as a tripod. I also use my cell phone, which is the iPhone SE, which actually has the camera of the 6S Plus packed into it. In a pinch, I will also use my Nexus 5 for help, as I, it does record in 1080p. Um, the camera is not the greatest of HD recording, but uh, I've also, I think in the past what I've really used this for, I have recorded with video with it recently, though um, I would sometimes use it for recording the audio, and so I think it was because I had this being used as an auxiliary camera, and uh, everything else was at the same time as well, and so that's why I also have this auxiliary microphone and this one which is white is a crude 
prototype that it's a, a clip from a flash uh, like a tiny little flashlight from the dollar store and uh, and like the sound hole comes out there it's it's like glued on and painted with white out and there's no uh, there's no wind insulation so it does uh, it, it picks up the wind unless I like to wear this under my druid robe because it blends in a little bit better. Next I have this really old thing which some of my videos have been recorded with this. It is the Canon FS11 and it only records in standard definition but it's, it's, a still, it's still a good camera. It still works perfectly. Uh, and so that's what I use to film the moon on several occasions, uh, particularly for the YouTube Pagan Challenge video on what does the moon mean to you or something like that. It's one of the early ones back at, from back in February. It'd be nice to upgrade this to one that does HD, but uh, yeah, for now I I don't really use it that often. Um, and then we have this curiosity. It's a rag on a stick. Well, <laughs> a telescoping stick. Um, this was a magnetic telescoping stick that lost its magnet. And so now, I, and it's mounted on a block of wood that has basically a, an adapter for it that I can attach this mini tripod to it. So this crude curio is what I use as a target focus. Um, almost always when I'm using my SLR camera. And that's because it does not have a continual autofocus. Um, and so basically, if I'm using any type of the telephoto capability in the kit lens, it's important for me to make sure that it's in focus before I start recording because I don't have a camera assistant to make sure that my face is in focus. And so that is why I will set this up on an auxiliary tripod and I'll zoom in on these little tufts to see like how much focus I can get and then I'll zoom out to where I want it to be and that focus level will be preserved and so essentially this is my stand-in and so this will be where my hopefully where the top of my head is because I've noticed that I've tended to cut the top of my head out of some of my videos and uh, so then, once I'm in spot, I make sure that it's like my uh, my eyes are pretty much exactly where this was, st like, standing when I was using it as a focus target. One of these days, I'll actually purchase a focus target, which will do the same thing, but it just has like a little crosshairs on it and all sorts of fun lines to focus on. Um, speaking of multiple tripods, we'll start with the one I've had for the longest time, this beast is the Slick Universal U212 Deluxe. Oh, sorry, Charlie. So, there's the sticker. And I hope he's not eating his leash. <laughs> uh, but this one is older than I am. This, was, this belonged to my grandpa, and it is wearing out. But it, at its time, it was what he was using for his professional photography um, when he was using film SLR cameras and so it over time the accessories started to wear out and fall out or something and but this thing is really heavy and I believe the manufacturer still makes it so I don't I think it's only like 80 something dollars now um, also, one of the newer ones, excuse me, is my Vivitar Featherweight. It's really light. I probably wouldn't want to mount my heavy uh, Nikon DSLR onto it because of how light this is. It would make it incredibly, incredibly top-heavy. But it'd be great for lighter items such as cell phones or this camcorder is probably lightweight enough for it. But it's, yeah, it, it doesn't get very tall because it's more of the travel slash compact style. And then inside this central cylinder is another ascension shaft that it can get about another foot taller 
this way. And so, yeah. And it does have a quick release. I didn't think it did. I just kind of bought it because this was really cheap. And, uh, and the quick release does take some getting used to. Mostly because I've been spoiled by this tried and true slick. Which, I've never seen a tripod with a quick, quick release like this one before. But, it's so much easier than any of the ones, any other ones that I've worked with. And it's beautiful. Right now I currently have a dual monitor setup on my computer. And my computer is a Hackamack running, is it El Capitan? And then the software I use is unfortunately Adobe Premiere Elements 14. When I had Windows, I used Sony Vegas. I started with Sony Vegas 9 and I was spoiled. I learned on that so quickly and then once I started using the um, Adobe, well they, Sony doesn't make Vegas for or any of its uh, film editing products for uh, Mac apparently. So it was really disappointing and one of these days I'm going to save up for Final Cut Pro because I have the feeling that with the ratings that it gets that I'm just going to love it instantly and intuitively know how to use it. But intuitive is something that Adobe Premiere Elements 14 is not. I quickly learned how many things I cannot do that I could do in Sony Vegas and I quickly learned how many things take so many more steps than they did in Sony Vegas. And, and I thought working with Sony Vegas that was a lot of manual work. But with this one it's like we made up a whole bunch of steps that are unnecessary to make it look like we are, I, I don't know, some sort of asshat. I, <laughs> so, yes, I'm not happy with, with uh, Elements, Adobe Elements, or Premiere Elements, whatever. I can't even get the name right. Uh, lastly, I want to feature my DSLR and the, the tripod it is sitting on. Alright, so this thing, well, first of all, I'm also using a Vivitar 0.43x wide-angle lens here, and so it's, it's okay. But this thing that we got the camera mounted on is the top of yet another cheap tripod, which I believe was also a Vivitar. This one does not have a quick release, it just has that little screw on the bottom that goes straight up and through, so it's very, very simple. And so it rotates and it pivots vertically. Basically, this is something that I wanted, that I had designed for use as a um, car vlogging dash cam. It's a lunch tray, and it's got got two layers of that rubber padding, so it kind of minimizes the shock um, while I'm driving on Minnesota roads. So that is. <laughs> <laughs> really ghetto way of making a monopod and I've been using that off and on also when I was on the dock this comes in handy on the dock it comes in handy in a lot of places and so yeah that's that so thank you for watching my video all right I hope we're recording because here you go <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>